Hello, and welcome to the seventh episode of In the Studio with me, Donnie Carr. So today I wanted to show you uh, how I would create an atmosphere. I have this track I'm working on. I think it would benefit from a nice uh, atmospheric bed, um, something just subtle there in the background, kind of swirling around. And I want to show you how I would make, um, and I have an atmosphere loop pulled up. Uh, I want to show you how I would make that my own. So first, uh, I want to show you uh, the track without the atmosphere. So let's do that really quick first. And then I'll show you with the atmosphere. So that's the track without the atmosphere with the atmosphere. So uh, it's obviously way too loud, but just until we have it uh, right, we'll leave it that loud. Um, so what I have going on here, I already have it in the playlist and it's looped over a half of a bar and I just have it, you know, played out for eight bars. Um, so I have the atmosphere pulled into a sampler here, which is the, I'm using direct wave if you're using FL Studio, but you can do this in pretty much any sampler has these capabilities. So let's pull up a uh, direct wave. All right, oops, there we go. All right, so what we wanna do, I'm just gonna turn this off for now. How I would start this, let's just find, actually, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I show you this method, I just want to maybe uh, suggest or, yeah, talk about a couple other ways you can go about making an atmosphere. Um, you can use a field recorder. These are very popular. Uh, you can just record, uh, you know, at the mall, just outside, nature sounds, just whatever, and use that in your track. Maybe band pass it and side chain it, turn it down really low, add some reverb. Uh, you can also use a little snippet or vowel uh, from a vocal that's in your track and uh, loop that over, you know, however, you know, quarter notes or 16th notes, whatever you'd like, eighth notes, and uh, um, send it through 100% reverb and duck that down really low so it fits in with the track. You could do that with a lead maybe. Those are just a few, you know, tips on how you can maybe go about creating your own unique atmosphere and I'm going to show you this method here creating my own out of a atmosphere loop so let's find a cool starting point and we'll just kind of sift through the sample here until we find a cool spot that gels with the track here we go That sounds good. Kind of has a nice. I like that. Um, you can you can go a little bit further though. Let's uh, instead of just having a one shot starting point, we can make a little like a little mini loop here. So what we want to do, if you're using Direct Wave, this is probably a little bit different in uh, in other DAWs, but too bad. All right, so I'm going to go to Bounce, which allows me to do a little. Uh, little loop so it's gonna start here go to this point and then bounce back yeah. so you can create some really cool rhythms this way
liking that. It has a nice little pulse to it and it's kind of gelling with the track. Yeah. Let's listen to it in isolation though and see if it's clicking. Yep. Hear that? Let's see if we let's first thing I would try is maybe just increasing the attack time. So let's go into the zone tab. And ooh, it's already pulled up, so no. Try. No. So we may we may have to uh, move these around a little bit. So what's causing that is uh, if it's not on the zero crossing point, so a wave is doing this action. Woo! I'm a wave. And if it's a looping when it's not crossing at zero dB, that we call that the zero crossing point, then it, it causes little clicks and pops. Little, little bastards. So let's get rid of them. Um, so what we can do here is let's get rid of this, this clicky poo. So we're going to have to move these around probably so we get a good spot. Sounds cool, that little like crackle at the end. Let's listen to that with the track. I don't want all the instruments playing. It's just a little bit much. though that works nice yeah that works nice I like that little little snarl at the end kind of gives it some character um, so let's actually while we're listening to this in isolation there's a lot of low there's a lot of low energy in this sample yeah so let's get rid of that we don't want all of that All right, get me there. <clears throat> cool. Got rid of the uh, just a nice little low cut there. Now what I'm going to do is sidechain it as well, and we're going to start extreme, and then we'll uh, we'll dial it back till it sounds nice. But we're going to do that in context, of course. Let's get to delete some of these instruments really quick. Okay. good at 69 baby so I'm gonna leave it there all right so uh, it's obviously a little loud
Nice, that sounds good. It's fitting nicely. So let's listen to it without the atmosphere and then I'll bring it back in. You can hear the difference. With. Without. Very nice, that sounds good. So that's one way that I would go about using an atmosphere sample, um, but kind of making it my own. And I have it sent into one of my special uh, effects chains here. So maybe I'll show you that another time, but not today. And the last uh, thing that I wanted to mention um, in this episode is volume automation. Um, and why you should never use the, the mixer's volume knobs or uh, sliders. Never automate those. I used to do that all the time way back in the day, and it just makes a mess. And when it comes to mixing down your track, it's, you, you can't because as soon as you, you set it to a level, the automation kicks in, and then it's so it's just it, it's a big pain in the ass. So if you're going to automate volume, you always want to use, if you're in FL Studio, just use the channels volume here and automate that. Or you can use a third party plugin that has a simple gain control. So you can use, uh, I like to use, it's called Free G and it's free. So uh, a gain knob and a, pa a pan and a trim, super handy. So there she is, the Free G. And all her beauty. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because I always automate the volume on my atmospheres to go kind of in and out with the track and kind of climax when there's a drop and then you know just to give a little bit more movement. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, I hope that uh, this episode was enjoyable. Hope you learned something. Please leave a comment and I will see you next time on In the Studio. Take care.